how's it going guys welcome to audio addiction we have a special guest with us he does a bunch of different things you can say his name you know and all the things that he does because there's a lot of stuff uh how you doing i'm nick mason and better known in some circles as the living dead drummer and uh, the title kind of gives it away i'm a drummer <laughs> out uh los angeles um uh and uh now i'll toss it back to you <laughs> awesome there we go well obviously the first question is nick how did you kind of get started out like you know obviously you do a lot of like session work and what we were talking about earlier which you know we'll maybe i don't want to give you ptsd about it so no uh, no we can talk about it we can talk about it <laughs> but uh so like how did you get started out because like i'm very curious on how like musicians kind of come into their own and obviously being a session musician is a little bit different than you know like in a band or something like that so did you start out in like bands and then you're just like oh i'm just gonna like my next step is like session work i'm gonna do that and then you know so like how what what is the story of nick how did how did it all begin um yeah well it was it was kind of like you just said where it started out in bands and then kind of took a sidestep um i i started playing in bands like rock bands and stuff like that when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. um, I, I started playing drums when I was a kid and I did the whole like school band and orchestra type thing. Sure. And, yeah. And then kind of, you know, probably around age 13, um, sort of graduated to a full drum set where, you know, I'd already been playing drums for a number of years, but like, you know, like I said, school band, you know, band it's orchestra playing you know, xylophone and stand up, you know, marching bass drum and, and concert snare drum and stuff like that. And so, uh, I kind of moved to drum set. Um, you know, like I said, I think around 12 or 13 and, uh, and then like immediately was like, I want to be in a rock band, kind of, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, started like trying to, to, when I got into high school, I started like hitting the ground pretty hard hunting around, like, who who in this school plays guitar kind of thing um or which of my friends can i convince to start learning guitar uh, which also happened and um started playing in bands and stuff like that um at a pretty early age and started playing out in you know questionable dirty nightclubs and stuff at an age <laughs> probably didn't for when i probably was too young to do that um and it, it was kind of through that, like I, I, you know, a few years into that, I had some other friends that were in another band and they had a, a gig coming up and they didn't have a drummer and they asked if I would do it. And like, I, that had never occurred to me before. <laughs> I was like, I had my band, you know, I was in like this thrash metal band and, um, uh, which was actually I was mathing it earlier for some stupid reason, but like the the twentieth anniversary of that band's first official professional release is next year, which is kind of oh cool. Oh my god, that's maybe awesome. I'm st and I'm still close with all the guys in that band too, so maybe we'll do something for it. But it's um, but my first real official professional recording session, um. W was yeah 20 years ago next year which is kind of neat um that's awesome but, but uh so i had my band and that was my band where i was like i was helping write lyrics and arrangements mm -hmm. and not just playing the drums it was my band and um when when these other friends asked me to play for them too i was like i could be in more than one band <laughs> you know like, and yeah. so yeah i agreed i learned their songs i did the show um and i was treated very nice because i was not a part of their band they treated me like this guy's doing us a huge favor <laughs> and so you know uh getting that sort of treatment i don't want to say anyone was like kissing my butt or nothing but like <laughs> getting that sort of like appreciation for you coming in and doing a job um and and the also the the variety of being able to play different styles of music and be able to go on stage one night and play with this band and then go on stage another night and play with a different band with a completely different sound and a different style um that kind of flipped the switch for me and i was like that's that's kind of cool actually 
being able to be in different bands and do different things. Yeah. Um, and that, yeah, that, that kind of started me down the path of like, maybe I shouldn't just be in a band with, with a bunch of people trying to like go for the gold and, and go for the long haul and, and, you know, make it or whatever. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I should be in every band. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the other thing that really like pushed it over the edge for me was um, it was around that same time in the, the late nineties, early two thousands kind of thing. When um, uh, I discovered uh, a new drummer, and realized that he wasn't a new drummer. He was around for many years and played on a giant amount of recordings that I had been listening to my whole life. Sure. And I realized, oh, wait, this one dude played on all of those people's records. Like I listened to him on the radio every single day, but never with the same band. <laughs> and I didn't know that. You know what I mean? And that was another thing. It was like, well, if that guy can do it, then I'm going to do it too. Um, so that's where I decided to to pursue being a session musician and, and being a hired gun is because now I get to work with dozens of people at a time yeah. playing all different styles of music and and I have fun doing all of it, you know? Yeah, no, it, I've, I feel like that's really cool because like, you know, with – you know, most of the time when I have the ch people on the channel, it's usually like bands that, you know, you know, you have, you know, X, Y, Z drummer, you have like, you know, how many guitar players you got, bass player, but it's nothing like what you do in terms of like, okay, I'm doing session work. Like one night I could be playing jazz. The next night I could be playing like, you know, like some like hair metal. The next night I could be playing like, you know, like a country show. Um, so was it more so like a facilitator of like practicing your craft in, in in a different light, like playing different shows because you're like, oh, well, this night I'm going to be practicing like this set. And then the next night I'm going to be doing like a rock show. So I'm going to practice the rock stuff. So was it more or less that or you're just like, you know, who cares? Like, I'm going to do whatever I want, whatever genre I want. Like, if I'm feeling this tonight, I'm going to do this. If I'm feeling this, like, you know, next week, I'm going to do that. Was it more so that, or are you just like, I just want to be good at everything, any sort of genre, and just, it, like, it's, kill it? Well, I I mean, that's the ultimate goal, is I want to be good at everything, and I want to be able to kill it no matter what I'm doing. <laughs> I, I, I think it's a little bit of both of what, we, what you were saying. Um I, there are definitely um, uh, genres of music that I had not dipped my toes into until I had to, um, where someone calls up and they say, you know, we, we've got this show and we want you to do this kind of thing. Sure. And you listen to the music and you're like, I've never done this before. <laughs> and so then you're kind of just at square one learning like, okay – the, what kind of direction do I have to go in to accomplish this goal sort of thing? Um, you know, and along the way, I think you develop your own identity and your own personality when it comes to your instrument anyway. There are definitely things that I can hear uh, no matter what style of music I play where I'm like, yeah, that sounds like me because I did this stupid trick or something like that right <laughs> oh yeah that drum fill i use that all the time and it's like and it has nothing to do with the style or genre of music at all that's just a nick thing that he does you know um yeah. uh but it is kind of cool being able to to learn different styles of music i i tend you know i grew up like i said in a rock band i i grew up playing mainly rock music i didn't really start learning how to play punk music until a punk band called me and asked me to play for them i didn't really start learning how to play country music until a country band called me but then i would focus on that for what i had to do and i would do my homework and i would listen to sure. um that kind of music and i'd listen to those drummers and stuff like that the people that were prominent in their field mm -hmm. it's like oh well someone wants you to come in on the I, perfect example uh, just in the last week. So today, 
I was recording uh, country music. Uh, and last week I recorded a song that was more kind of a pop rock song. And the so, guy straight up told me, he's like, yeah, man, make it, make it like a pop punk thing like Travis Barker. <laughs> so, you know, all right. He wants me to, to emulate Travis Barker on this. I listened to his song, you know, I kind of jammed through it doing what I naturally would do on my own with my own approach, given no direction. And then I go and I start listening to like popular Blink-182 songs and listen to the things that, you know, Travis Barker does on his recordings. Yeah. And then I figure out, okay, how do I merge the two? How do I marry my natural tendencies with his natural tendencies? And uh and and find a, a happy middle ground that this client is going to like yeah you know and they're gonna like my approach and my playing but i'm drawing influence from one specific area kind of thing and you know with the country music i was recording today uh same thing i got a bunch of friends that are like uh, big country session guys and stuff like that and i listen to certain things in their playing and on their songs i listen to the tone of the drums i listen to um, how straight they're playing something versus how much of a swing do they give it, kind of, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm thinking about that while I'm <laughs> recording, while I'm playing, you know? Um, and and try to let that bleed into my natural playing a little bit. So the next thing would be, Nick, because that's interests me a lot because I'm not a session musician, you know, I just enjoy music. And I've never, I don't think I've had anybody that's done like more session work. So you're number one currently. So if anybody wants to th throw Nick, uh, don't because he's great. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but like how, how much research goes into like how many days do you, or like, do you spend weeks on it or is it kind of like varied upon like, you know, different clients and stuff like that? Cause that, I feel like, you know, something where you're just like, you know, I feel like you would have to be like ingrained and engulfed in like what you were saying earlier, like Blink One Eighty Two with Travis Barker. So, like, how often do you listen to Travis Barker songs? Is it like constantly? You know, you got your headphones on, you're constantly listening to Travis Barker, and then like when you get to the kit, you're like trying to practice some stuff that like you know obviously fits within your style, but obviously kind of emulates what Travis does. And or is it more like? okay, I have a long, longer amount of time to figure it out. So like, let me kind of like really hone in on each song and be like, okay. And you know, this minute Mark, he does this kind of like Travis Barker fill and he does it in this song. He does it in this song. He does it in this song. You know, how much research goes into it? Cause that to me, like I said, very much interests me as like, wow, that's, that must be a lot of work. <laughs> um, there, there's actually not a lot of research that goes into it. Um, uh, there's a lot of the time it's things that you've just heard over and over just through natural, um, progression of listening to music on the radio sure. or on TV when, you know, or, or however people consume music these days and stuff like that. Um, uh, one of the lessons I was teaching earlier with one of my students, um, he's learning a, a Led Zeppelin song or he's learning two Led Zeppelin songs. You know, I don't go home and listen to Led Zeppelin all the time. <laughs> I know, I know the popular songs that everybody knows, um, and I, I know enough of John Bonham's style that I gave him three rules. I said, okay, listen, you're playing this song. It's not very well structured. It's kind of a loose jam. So you want to sound like John Bonham when you're playing it. Here's what you do, A, B, and C. Think about those things while you play and then go for it kind of deal. It wasn't, it's not one of those things where it's like, okay, hammer Zeppelin over your head for a couple of days. <laughs> um, so there's there's really not a lot of research that goes into it. Um, uh, only when I'm given specific direction by somebody, sure. like in the case of that session last week when they said, you know, guys like, go Travis Barker on it. When someone says something like that, then I'll think, all right, 
of my knowledge of Travis Barker, what are some things that he does, you know? Um, and if it's uh, a specific direction where I, I don't have a frame of reference, if they throw out um, a drummer or an influence that I'm maybe not familiar with sure. just through natural music around me kind of thing, then I'll go and I'll listen to a couple of random songs and kind of get a feel for it. But that's, that's pretty rare. Um, most of the time, uh, when I'm asked to, to play for somebody, whether it's uh, in a recording studio or live or whatever it is, sure. most of the time they already have the songs done. Uh, and I'm just learning songs that are already established. Um, whether it's a, a demo recording that just has a program loop on it, mm -hmm. or it's a full-blown production it's been finished for x amount of years it's been played on the radio whatever it is and i'm just learning what's already done that's that's the majority of it like nine times out of ten i'm just learning someone else's drum part <laughs> and um and then trying to get comfortable with that and make whatever is on that established recording um feel natural to me uh, so when it comes to something like that, it, it really depends on how difficult the song is for how much time I have to spend on it. There are times when I'll just play those songs every single day for a week or two, but you're not always afforded that time. Sure. There's been a lot of times where I've had like less than 24 hours notice on a job or something like that, or, um, <laughs> I, there was... There was one uh, a show I was doing a, a couple of months ago where literally as I walked into the venue, they grabbed me and they're like, do you know the song? <laughs> and I'm like, what? What? Apparently the drummer who was on before me um, canceled. And they were under the impression that he had gotten someone to fill in for him and they were under the impression that person was me. And I'm like, I don't even know who this person is you're talking about. I've never, I don't know who that is. So, and then they're like, well, do you know these songs? And I was like, give me 10 minutes. And I, I ran to the dressing room with a sheet of paper. I listened to the song once, wrote a, a chart out as I Ooh. listened to it. I said, all right, let's go. And we got up on stage and we played. And so that was literally absolutely no prep time at all. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was 10 minutes of I've never heard this song in my entire life to being on stage in front of an audience performing it. Um and I guess I did an okay job because last week the guys that I played with hit me up and asked if I would do that same song again uh with them but in like a with an online video kind of thing like sure, everybody's yeah. doing now. And they're like, "Hey, do you want to do this do you want to play it with us again? And they're like, now you can actually learn it. <laughs> so I must yeah. not have been that bad if they came, if they called me back and asked me to, to do it again. But um, yeah, so the, the amount of prep time is always different. Uh, obviously, if I have a lot of time, I'll use it and I'll take it. If someone says, we have a gig, but it's not for two months, I'll say, great, send me the material right now. now. Yeah. And I will jump on it and I will work on it every day for those two months uh just so that way the first time i step out on stage with them it, it's like we've been playing it for years kind of thing but that that's yeah. always you know there's always some trust that needs to go involved with that and and it's not always the case it, it's it's kind of all over the place you know it's, it's few and far between yeah exactly there's you're never in the same situation twice <laughs> and um yeah, but I mean, back to your original question, I, I went off on a tangent, but uh, it's all good. The the research part of it, really, I, I don't do a lot of research. There's a, you know, most famous drummers, um, other drummers are already aware of <laughs> and already have a familiar taste of that person's playing style because that person's famous. So everybody knows who they are. That's what Sorry. that means. Everybody knows who they are, <laughs> you know? Um so someone says, oh, I need I need a Steve Gadd feel on this thing. It's like, well, all right, I, I've known who Steve Gadd was since the time I was eight years old. So I got you or whatever <laughs> it's going to be like. So I don't do a lot of research unless it's something I'm, I'm totally 
unfamiliar with. Sure. Um, which I also is like not common, you know, by this stage of the game, it's like, I you know a little bit of most styles of music, you know? Sure. <laughs> no, that's, that's really cool. And I think it just, like I said, it shows off your versatility as a drummer and it's, it's interesting to me, like I said, because it's not something I typically have on. So whenever I have people on that, I'm like, I need to know about this. I don't know why, but I just need to know about it. And then so I ask the question. So um, oh, anything. <laughs> but, but what was what? Obviously, since you're a session drummer, what's one you know group of people that you know you you got you had like just the time of your life like obviously there was kind of like some accolades that i received in an email about like the people that you've drummed for so like you know who was one that kind of stuck out to you the most that you were just like oh my god i'm really doing that like this experience is like something i'll never or i hope that i experience again you know and something like that there i mean there's been a there's a handful um there there's quite a few there's uh so some like some of the most fun ones anyway. Um, I've been playing with a band called The Rhythm Coffin for a number of years now, like about three three years, maybe four at this point. Um, kind of lost track, but um, they're they're one of the most fun bands I've ever worked with, and uh, I actually auditioned to be in their band years ago, and oh, wow. uh, the, the schedule just didn't work out. Is what it was is. Um, they're, you know, you can kind of guess from the name, The Rhythm Coffin. They're sort of horror Halloween thing. <laughs> Not horror like scary, gory, horror like fun, you know? Yeah. Fun, fun Halloween. They could easily play like a supporting slot with Alice Cooper or Rob Zombie just as fittingly as they could play a 10 year old's birthday party. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they're, they're like Kiss Meets Scooby Doo. Okay. You know? Yeah. Um, and uh, and that's what attracted me to them. They, I saw the act, I listened to the music, and I was like, "This is amazing!" It's all like fast Ramon style punk rock, rock and roll, classic rock and roll kind of, you yeah. know, very Ramones. But but they're all dressed up in like makeup, and they, <laughs> they look like this on stage, and they're throwing props around, and they're all their songs are about werewolves and zombies, and I like. I loved it. So I uh, I was like, I want to be in that band. So I auditioned <laughs> to be in them. But you can guess from that that October's kind of their busy season. Sure. And at the time, I was already committed to another tour that was going to kind of take me on the road for the majority of October. Um, so I couldn't accept the gig. And then I stayed in touch with them, and I was, I was like a legit fan. And then a year or two um, went by, and... They hit me up and looking for a recommendation. They're like, we found ourselves in need of a drummer again. Uh, we know you're like super busy. Do you know anyone that you can recommend? And I was just like, oh, this is all through email. I just emailed them right back and I was like, stop looking. I'll tell you, I'll do it. <laughs> they were like, well, we know that you, you know, you tour and everything else a lot and everything. And I was like, I let me worry about that. You got yourself a drummer. <laughs> and, uh, so I jumped to be in, in, in that band and like, they are some of the most genuine, fun people I've, I've ever met. And when I say genuine, I, I mean like they're very, very, very um, thoughtful and caring and they're just good people. They're good human beings. And I have so much fun playing with them. And um, uh, I've done two records with them now, and we've started working on the third one. I've, I've just got sent a new song yesterday. I've already cut drums on a, on a handful of songs, and they sent me another one yesterday that I'm going to start recording um, tomorrow. And so that's one that stands out in, in recent years. And um, another one is, is a band actually over in Europe uh, called V2A. And they're an industrial band, very like KMFDM, Rammstein kind of oh, stuff. Oh, okay, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. No, maybe maybe not as heavy as Rammstein, a little bit dancier. Um, uh, biggest comparison is like KMFDM, which I grew up a huge KMFDM fan. Um, I discovered them in like the mid-90s and was just sold my whole life. <laughs> and so this band um, 
I got involved with them about three years ago. Also, it was around the same time as the Rhythm Coffin, where um, they, like I said, they're from Europe. They were coming over here, and I had recently uh, befriended a promoter that was okay. bring, that was bringing them over here. And he's like, "Hey, man, I don't know anything about drums." And they sent me this laundry list rider of equipment they need because they're flying. They can't bring anything. He's like, "Can you help me like track this stuff down yeah. and locate it and find good deals and prices and rentals and stuff?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure." So I'm going line by line through the rider, and I'm finding all out. You know, I'm trying to help track down all this gear for them. Sure. And. Uh, and then the promoter tells me that they don't have a drummer. And I'm like, well, what did they send you this list? What do you mean they don't have a drummer? What did they send you this list of all this equipment for if they don't even have a drummer? Apparently the guy like recently left the band, like oh. within within a, that week or something like that. You know what I mean? And so I just told the promoter, I said, I got an idea. Tell them to just hire me. <laughs> then you won't have to find any of this stuff. It's going to save you money because you won't have to rent any of this gear because yeah. I own all of it. And they won't have to pay for another plane ticket from Europe. The, I'm here. here. Yeah. They're flying here. I'm here. So um, he kind of brokered that deal for me. And uh, they did ask that I like, you know, they said, can you just take a quick like video of yourself playing this song? So I learned their song. I took a cell phone camera video of me playing, <laughs> emailed it. And like an hour later, they're like, great, you're hired. <laughs> and um, uh, no rehearsals. I, to this day, I've been with the, I've been in the band for three years. To this day, I've never rehearsed with them. Uh, they just wow. sent me the songs and said, we'll see it when we get there. <laughs> and the, the first time I ever played with them was at Soundcheck uh at our first show or my first show with them in a huge theater with like a massive crowd <laughs> and it was like oh man this is i i can't i can't screw this up we yeah didn't practice you know <laughs> um they're hearing me play all this stuff for the first time right now uh and the show was great, and like I said, I've, I've been with them ever since. And so, like when when they do tours and stuff, I fly over to Europe, or they fly here, and um, uh, that's been another one that's been just a lot of fun because, again, I just enjoy the people. I get along with them really well. They are definitely people that I'm okay being on a tour bus with for an extended period of time, <laughs> and um, uh, we get along great. They're they're very polite. Um, I don't know, maybe that's, maybe that's the British in them or something, but they're very <laughs> polite people, uh, and we get along great, and, and so anytime they're like, all right, it's tour time, I'm, I'm not ever, ever worried about being stuck on a tour bus with them at all, it's, it's always a pleasure, so, the, I mean, those are a couple off the top of my head that are just fun, good people, I enjoy working with them, I enjoy the music that we're, we're doing, and, and yeah it's it's great i love it that's such a cool experience because like you know being able to just like right place right time sort of situation you know it's just crazy to me to think like wow you know people were missing this or missing some sort of other thing and you're just like happen to be there right at the right time and you're just like i'm doing it let's game i'm game i'm doing it like and i think that's one of the cool things about what you do at least at least from my point of view is like you know, you're not closing yourself off to like a certain thing where you're just like, okay, I only play metal or I only play rock or I only play whatever. You're allowed to do, you know, a bunch of different genres and, you know, afford you the opportunity to like go to Europe and like, you know, play shows out in like the European circuit and then obviously here in the States. Uh, so it's just really cool to see that kind of like you know, just just happenstance of things happening just at the right time, right place. And it's really cool because I think, like, the story you'll be able to tell is just, like, it's just nuts. I'm sure your, like, friends and family are just like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm just going to – I'm going to go hop on a flight to Europe. Yeah, I'll be I'll be gone for, like, the next month. It's cool, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's cool. They, you know, they, they like seeing the photos and stuff like that. I, I try – it's hard to – it's hard to be a tourist when you're on sure, tour. Yeah, I you see, you know, 
the inside of a lot of airports and hotels <laughs> and, you know, venues and stuff like that. You don't really get out to see much of it. Um, but I try as much as I can. I try to to sneak it in and around and stuff like that where I can. And I'll I'll put photos up on social media and stuff. For, so that way friends and family can see. And, and they're, you know... Um, and they can see kind of the things that I'm I'm up to when I'm out there. So <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, the next question, Nick, the big one: Who were you influenced by? Like, who were the first people that got you started drumming? Obviously, like you said, you played, you know, in school, like marching bands and stuff. Um, but like, who were some of like more of the like artists that you start growing up listening to that influenced your sound? And obviously, who are some like modern drummers that you really dig now? Um. Well, I mean, the, the big influences that got me started in, in drumming in the first place, uh, honestly, was my family. Um, my family's all drummers. Oh, wow. Like, okay. So that, yeah. There you go. So, well, my mom's side of the family anyway. My my father um, is a guitarist and he owns a guitar repair business and stuff like that. So I kind of like grew up in, around music stores and stuff like that. Sure. I used to go, to go to work with my dad on Saturdays and hang out while he's fixing and building guitars and, and stuff like that, which is cool. So I got to be around that. My mom's side of the family, they're all drummers. My mother included. She owns two drum sets, you know? That's tight. Um, my, my uncle, uh, uh, he had a band in the early 80s and stuff like that. And I had, like, their cassette tape. And I used to try to play along to it. I, I just had a snare drum at home. But I tr would try to play along to my uncle's demo tape kind of thing when I was a kid. And now he's like, he plays in like four or five cover bands and he's got, <laughs> you know, 20 drum sets in his house or whatever. Um, you know, their father, my grandfather, he was a drummer. Uh, all of my cousins ended up being drummers or if they weren't a drummer. They married a drummer or their kid was a drummer or like, it just was a thing in our yeah. family. Um, so that's kind of where the influence to like pick up the sticks in the first place came was like, I already had them. I already had you. Know, <laughs> you were born with them. In a bucket of sticks. <laughs> Came out with two, two. sticks. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like, oh, here's your career, kid. You know, <laughs> you have, have a choice. Uh, so it, it was pretty cool that to get started that way. And then once I started getting into it, you know, you start developing your own musical tastes and things like that. Sure. As you start getting older, then outside drummers then started bleeding in and stuff like that you know uh when i was a kid uh all right like the biggest bands in the world when i first started sitting behind a drum set it was the the early 90s so it was like nirvana and stuff like that so you know those types of bands like a lot the a lot of the grunge bands and stuff like that kind of had a big influence on me um I was a huge, and still I'm a huge Metallica fan. Um, so obviously, you know, Lars was a big influence yeah. on my playing. And there's even things that I do today that I can hear in my playing where I'm like, I totally got that from listening to Metallica <laughs> growing up. You know, um, Aerosmith was another one. You know, uh, Aerosmith was pretty prominent in my household uh, and frequently being played. And <laughs> So, you know, I had posters of like Joey Kramer all over my bedroom walls when I was a kid and stuff like that. And uh, uh, there's a lot of his playing from that decade, from the 90s, that bled into my playing too, where, again, like like Metallica, where it's like I'll play or do something on, on the drums and I know instantly where I got that from <laughs> like, oh, you stole that from Aerosmith, you know what I mean? Or you played like that because of X, Y, and Z kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, uh, Lars, Joey Kramer, uh, Sean Kinney from, from uh, Alice in Chains was another one where just I, – I borrowed different things from different drummers when it came to, like, Alice in Chains, the sound of his drums, the actual tone of his drums – I just fell in love with and was sure. like, I want my drums to sound like <laughs> that, you know? Um, and 
And uh, another really big influence is a more modern guy, um, and that's Josh Fries. And he is a session guy. He's that session guy that I discovered in high school and found out he had been playing on all these records. <laughs> and I set out to, like, capture his career. Um, that was the guy, is, is I... Um, when when a perfect circle came out and i don't know when that was if it was like 2000 maybe um when their first record came out you know all my friends and i were interested in checking it out because it was you know the lead singer from tools side project yeah. and we all were fans of tool so i remember listening to that record going man Maynard has like the world's greatest drummers in all of his bands. Like between having Danny Carey and Tool and whoever this new guy is on this other record, he like this dude just goes around employing the best of the best drummers on all of his projects. Yeah. And that led me to like, all right, flip the back of the CD over and see, look at the album credits and see who is this person. And it was Josh Fries. I'm like, I don't know who that is. And then I looked him up. And I found this laundry list of just bands that he's played in. And I'm, that's when I found out. I was like, I, li I hear this dude on the radio every single day and didn't know it. And I was like, okay, I, I want to be Josh Freeze. I want to be that guy who's not in one band. He's in every band. <laughs> you know, he's played on everybody's records. He's touring with every single band that's hot at the moment. Like, that's what I'm going to do. You know, and it's kind of cool because through my career of pursuing a, a life like that, being a session drummer, um, I've gotten to interweave and, and intertwine with some of these people where there's a good number of, of work I've done where I'm on stage playing with whatever band. But if you listen to the record, it wasn't me playing on the record. It was Josh Freeze. <laughs> and that happens. A lot. And I've done that too. There was a, I was on a music video set one time. And I was just like, uh, I was asking the the artist a certain question uh, about the drums on it. I was like, yeah, there's this one part where I hear this, but I hear that. And I was like trying to figure out what was going on there. Uh, who played on Who played on this record? He goes, oh, Josh did it. And I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and that's happened more than a few times. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you been able to meet Josh? If you don't mind me asking. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I've, you met uh, Josh. A few different occasions. We we've crossed paths quite a few times and stuff like that. Um, and uh, there was shoot, I don't know, a year or two ago, there was a time I was I was in a rehearsal. I was in a rehearsal studio with the Rhythm Coffin actually, <laughs> and I heard a song I recognized from the room next to us. And um, it was just a cover song kind of thing, but it, it stuck out in my mind because earlier that day I had been teaching one of my students that song. Sure, yeah. And I was like, that's not the right drum part in that part of the song. <laughs> so you were and like, I, I have to find I, out like, who it I, is. I did. And then when I, I not, I'm not like talking poorly of him because he is one of my biggest influences, but I. I went out in the hall and all the studios in this place uh, had windows on the doors. Uh, and I just okay. peeked in to be like, I wonder who's playing in there. And I peeked in and it was Josh on drums. <laughs> and I was like, I, it instantly made me feel better about every decision I've ever made as a drummer because it was like, all right, I know this one particular part and it's a small, minuscule, tiny, insignificant part in the song, but I know that part in the song and he did, he played something different. What he played was fine, and no one in a million years would notice that it was different <laughs> than the actual part of the song, other than me, because three hours prior, I had been teaching that song. <laughs> so you know, yeah. So I knew. But the fact that he was doing that gig made me feel better about all of the gigs that I do and stuff like that, too. It was it was cool. And, and yeah, we've crossed paths a few times and stuff like that. I... I feel fortunate that honestly all of my influences and all of my idols except for maybe one or two i've gotten the chance to actually oh, shake up with and talk to and meet and and spend a little time with which is kind of cool there's like i said there's only like one or two that i haven't you know but i'm sure 
just through natural progression of the, <laughs> the industry and, and career paths and stuff like that, I'm sure I'll cross paths at some point, or at least I hope I will. Well, there you go. Well, I hope you get to cross paths with them soon. I mean, you're you're not out of the loop if you want to name drop, you know, if you want to say who, who you want to cross paths with, you know, just put it out in the universe. But, you know, just, I, I don't know. I believe in that sort of thing where if you say it, some, there, some magical thing happens where, you know, it works out. So, I mean, it's up to you. you we still got plenty of time, well, so I'm not going oh, no, to no, hold no. it to you. <laughs> Like I said, the, out of all the big influences I've had in my my drumming life kind of thing, I've met pretty much all of those people. Um, Lars Ulrich from Metallica is one that I haven't met. Um, I've had paths crossed with him before, but I've never actually um, gotten to like stand in the same room and shake his hand. We've been sure. in the same building at the same time and just, you know... It, we didn't quite get to to connect kind of thing um he's one person that it would be great to like just shake his hand and just say you know thanks for all the years of of music yeah um dave Grohl is another one like i said he was an early influence on me not he's not a i'm not gonna say he's a big influence i'm not gonna put him in like my top five and i'm not taking anything away from him he's <laughs> a phenomenal musician um top to bottom um but he was there at the beginning stages of my career because Nirvana was the biggest band in the world when sure. I was playing drums as a kid. And so you couldn't help but want to run home and jump behind your drums and play Teen Spirit. Like that's oh, yeah. what every kid in the neighborhood wanted to do. <laughs> so he would be another cool person to meet. And again, I've been like in the same building and and like didn't know it where it's like he's in that room and i'm in that room and i just had no idea until after um or we have like mutual friends and stuff like that but again sure. like never actually cross paths. paths he'd be another yeah he'd be another cool person to like just sit and talk drums with for 10 minutes you know yeah but outside of like those big monumental names like that you know i've met joey kramer i've met tommy lee and i've I've met Josh and I've met a lot of these other guys that were really, really big influences on me um, as a kid. And, um, and the, I mean, the cool thing is too, so there's some of them, I won't like name drop a lot, but there's, there's some people that I've met that I've gotten to be friends with Yeah, where, you know, they're, there was one other big, like, major, major, major influence that I had as a kid growing up. And, again, he was like Joey Kramer where I had, like, posters of this dude <laughs> on my walls when I was in high school. And uh, he and I are friends now. He and I have been friends for, like, 15 years. <laughs> but when I was a kid, he was just this dude I looked like up the, to. Yeah, the idol. Yeah, yeah. He, he was on that level of, like, you know Lars and and Tommy Lee and all sure. these people. He he's on that level with them, and um, and I feel very fortunate that like now we can hang out. You know <laughs> now I can hit him up whenever I want and we can chat and stuff like that. And we hung out around the holidays and stuff like that. <laughs> so, um, it's uh, it that's kind of was a, a nice perk of being in the industry and being in the career. <laughs> Stuff like that was like getting to meet some of these people that you looked up to and then actually developing a relationship with them and, yeah. and now it's they're less of um the rock star you look up to and more of like the peer you yeah. know so, or the cool guy you can hit up when you need to like borrow a piece of gear <laughs> <laughs> you're like wait, there you go you're like, the you're true like, can i borrow that snare drum for this session i got going on <laughs> you know the true answer comes out the extortion <laughs> um no it's i feel i feel the same way you know like doing this sort of thing like it's crazy to it's crazy to think like some of the bands that i like grew up listening to and then i'll have the opportunity to interview them it's just such a cool experience and like if i told myself like four years ago when i started this like yeah you're gonna be interviewing people that like you know got you into music and stuff like that like it, i would have been like shut your mouth there's no way like there's yeah. no way and it's it's such a cool experience and such a such a cool feeling so i'm glad uh hopefully lars and you know because i know lars and dave watch my this this video so um you know guys <laughs> 
let's 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 make it happen. Let's make uh let's make uh, Dave's day. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> come on, Dave's man. Day. Let's I'm get sure it. He'll, I'm sure if he were to see this, he'd really think that he'd be like, who are these guys? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's even better. That's what you. No, I'm just kidding. You should. Right. Th- if it ever happens, that'd be awesome. But, um. But I feel like it's really cool, like your whole storyline, and obviously, like your entire, almost most of your mom's side of the family just playing drums. It's just wild to me when you said that. You're just like, yeah, like almost everybody plays drums, or they're like married to a drummer or whatever. And I'm just like, that's crazy. Like that's such a cool experience, and like, you know, obviously, all of you guys kind of like bonding over music. Did you guys ever kind of like when you were starting out? Did you like were you like doing like early jam sessions with like? the mom mom and dad and just like you know having some some just fun or where they were like kind of like uh maybe when no. you get a little earlier we'll you uh, will do start some stuff <laughs> and then no you know what <laughs> that that actually never happened until uh recently really so, wow okay yeah, i would have never so guessed that a few years ago um i was going back home to visit because i'm from the east coast i you know um I uh, I went back home to visit, and um, my dad's band decided to, to. They booked a gig, and they decided to have like a big family blowout, and have all of our friends and family come. Sure, yeah. And, and I got to play drums with my dad. You know, so my dad played guitar, and I played drums, and uh, that was like the first real time i ever got to like jam with my old man which was kind of cool <laughs> you know what i mean um that was that was cool and um and so now anytime i'm coming home to visit you know the one you, the one guitar player that he plays with is always like oh nick's coming back let's book a gig you know <laughs> um and uh and on my mom's side of the family I mean, being all drummers, we could have had one hell of a drum circle. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) It never really happened until this past Christmas. Oh, so you Um, got the drum circle rocking. Yeah. So I I always had this, like, fantasy of just showing up unannounced for the holidays. I've never (laughs) – I've been living in in Los Angeles for over 10 years. I've never gone home to visit during the holidays. Um not because I'm a shitty person, but <laughs> because not. they're under seven feet of snow. And <laughs> that was why I left in the first place. Sure, one. yeah. I don't own a winter coat. You know what I mean? So <laughs> uh, so I just, I always picked like warmer uh, seasons to go visit family. <laughs> um, but I, I always had this fantasy of like, wouldn't it be cool to just show up at Christmas unannounced? And I'd always wanted to do that. And this year I finally did. So, um, I just showed up to like, my, my dad always has a big, huge family get together on Christmas Eve. And my mom's side of the family always has Christmas day. And so I just showed up to both and didn't tell anybody. (laughs) (laughs) And, um, uh, the day after, uh, at my uncle's house, uh, my cousin's uh, daughter, her birthday is um, around that same time. Okay. And so they figure, well, everybody's usually in town for the holidays, so we'll we'll have the birthday then. So it um, they had this big birthday party. And again, like massive family gathering, uh, people that couldn't be there for Christmas because they had to be at somebody else's family's or, or something like that, right? Everybody was there. We had uh, two, three, four, wait, is it four or five generations <laughs> under one roof oh for, my the first God. Time, for the first time ever. That's you know what I mean? It was, it was absolutely insane. And um, my uncle's house is full of musical instruments. Like I said, he's got like a dozen drum sets around. <laughs> he's got two set up in the family room. And... Um, you know, he's got a piano and at one point it wasn't planned. At one point, somebody went and sat down and started kind of tinkering behind the and piano. The piano yeah. My uncle sat down behind one of the drum sets and, <laughs> and pulled a pair of brushes out and just started kind of jamming along. And I was just sitting there. I was sitting at the other drum set, but I was just kind of hanging out, just sitting. Oh. 
And then he's like, pointing to me, he's like, grab, grab them sticks. You know, <laughs> it's like, we're going to trade, ready? We're going to trade off. And so I walked over to his drum set and like in the middle of him jamming with this other, this other guy on the piano, uh, he hands me the brushes and I sat down and we transitioned and I took over. <laughs> and then he went to the other drum set, grabbed a pair of sticks and we, we kind of jammed a little bit. And then he tells uh, my cousin who yet yeah, is another drummer, but also, you know, uh, plays guitar and sings and stuff like sure. that. He's like, he's like, he's like, run upstairs and grab the guitar out of the bedroom. <laughs> so the next thing you know, and I got another cousin who sings and stuff like that too. So the next thing you know, the whole family's rocking. Yeah. And and like it was just one by one, someone came running downstairs with a guitar and quick plugged it in and someone set up a mic and he had a PA system in the living room too. <laughs> you know? He so had it had all planned it out. Right he had there. it all planned yeah. out. He might have. And and the next thing you know, we're doing this big family jam and everybody else from the other room comes in and they're dancing and and it was wild. We got video of it where it's just the whole the whole family is dancing, and then me and my uncle are on you know dual drum dual sets. Drums, yeah. My cousin's playing guitar. My other cousin's singing. And another one's on the piano, and we were just like, "This is absolutely insane!" And we just <laughs> jammed, and we and it was so great. It was just one of the coolest things ever to to actually have that family jam session for the first time. You know. That, um, that is nuts. That is so yeah. cool. That is such a cool, like... Only took us almost 40 years, but we finally pulled it <laughs> off. <laughs> well, hopefully it doesn't take 40 years next time, because that just sounds like a, a great time, you know? Because, like, a lot of people don't know, or a lot of people, I guess, know this, but, like, I play guitar, so, like, I'm the only one in my family that plays any instruments, and my, like, mom and my dad's side of the family, they both don't play, like, I don't think anybody in their families play any instruments, except for, I think my one cousin plays guitar, and does kind of like beat stuff so like for me him and i are kind of close because we like play music and stuff like that or like attempt to play music and so you know i have an assimilation to that but i like couldn't even imagine having like literally you know generations of like family getting together and just be like yeah you want to hop on the drums okay cool uh we got a guitar upstairs yeah let's do that too oh I, we all know like you 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 all sing you know i know one of you has to play bass like it it just sounds like it just sounded like a good time so i had to i feel like in my head as like an interviewer i like had to ask that question because it must have been awesome it, it was so cool it was one of the coolest things ever it made my entire trip you know worth it that more special well not worth it but it, it i mean it was worth it going home to see family <laughs> holidays i don't want to shortchange them or nothing but it it did add a, a an extra special layer uh to the trip um because it wasn't planned and it was something really special that i got to share with my entire family you know um people are going to talk about that within our family for for generations now because they were all there you know <laughs> all the generations were there everybody from my grandmother up to like you know my grandmother at this point she's got great grandchildren you know yeah. and we were all there for the first time under one roof since i had moved away you know um and a couple of my other cousins had moved away and stuff like that and we all came <laughs> back at the same time you know um I had I had cousins that I was meeting for the first time at that party because while I was gone, uh, you know, one of my cousins, you know, had another kid kind of yeah. thing. The cousin got had another kid and that one got married and stuff. So there was people I was meeting for the first time because I had been gone for so long or <laughs> the times that I had come back. You know, I try to get back at least once a year to visit, sure. but the times I'd come back, maybe they were busy, you know, or we couldn't quite connect or whatever. The one time... Um, uh, the the last time I went home, uh, I was only there for like three days, and I was going for somebody's wedding, and I couldn't connect with one of my cousins because she was literally in the hospital having a kid. You know what I mean? Oh I was like, well, God. you have an excuse not to come over, then, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but and like on my dad's side of the family, um, y you know, the I was meeting all of my cousins, like wives and children, for the first time. <laughs> they all got married in the time that I've been gone, <laughs> that side of the family wasn't as close. So I only saw the, 
those cousins maybe once or twice a year when I lived there and being gone all this time, you know, we couldn't always get together when I would come to visit. So there was a lot of the time I was like, oh, you, I mean, I knew you got married, but it's nice to meet the wife that you had for three years. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's awesome. Well, hopefully next get together, you guys just rip it next time. But um, I, I think so. I think we the, will. I think we're going to try and make it a tradition. <laughs> but the next thing, Nick, um, a fun question uh, if you could pick somebody to collaborate with, obviously you do a lot of session work, but if you were like under your own project and there was people you'd want to work with, who would it be? People I want, that's a loaded question. Uh, people I want to work with. Uh, like you talking like hypothetical, like situation, like it could be anybody. I feel like well, or I'll give you. I'll give you two, alive, anyway? I'll give you two scenarios. So one, okay. I feel like more reasonable people, like you know, that you're just like you know, they're your peers. You're like, yo, like you're awesome. Uh, you know, I'm a really great drummer. You know, not that I don't know if you would say that. I don't know how you know an artist is you are, <laughs> but um, you know, you, I'd like to drum with you. Like you know, I'd love to get like kind of a group together and one that would just be like, dream like. You know, not to say it's unattainable, but just like, but hard. Not <laughs> that that person. I don't have that person's phone number. Yes. That kind of yeah, thing. that okay. kind of okay. thing. All right. <laughs> um, I, all right, all right. I can I can do that. Uh, I mean, there's a few people. There's people that I that I've known for a long time that I would love to to do something with. It's time to rope um, them in on the internet, just so that they yeah. that they're locked in now. You know what I mean? Like it's on and the internet. You said it. Yeah. <laughs> And that that's actually already happening. There there is a number of people that I've been able to work with just in the last couple of weeks that were people that I would love to have worked with. Um, you know, I the material hasn't been released yet, so I'm not gonna say any names or anything. <laughs> but I did get called, you know, last week by somebody who I would love to have worked with. Um, and and they called up and said, do you want to lay drums down on this thing for me? And I was like, yeah, that would, and it came out of the blue too, which was cool. And then I have another friend who I've known for many, many years. Um, and I've always wanted to work with this person. Um, we've been friends for, you know, decades. Uh, and we, we tried to put something together um, a while back and it never quite happened because we were both insanely busy and touring and everything else and it just never quite fleshed out and it was like well now now we got the time let's do it and i've already recorded two songs with them uh uh so um that was another one where it was like i've always wanted to to work with that person anyway and we've known each other forever <laughs> you know the only reason we haven't done it is because we live on opposite ends of the country so um the, the magic of the internet, right? But yeah. <laughs> um, there, I, there's probably a, a bunch of other people too that I'm just not thinking of on the spot that would be fantastic. And, and there's um, definitely people that I've known for a long time uh, that I, you know, have been thinking about calling up and saying, hey, you know, you're stuck at home. I'm stuck at home. Let's, Let's, let's do something. Do, let's do something. You know, um, I'd love to do something with with um, John Five or um, Orianthi, actually. Oh, nice! Um, yeah, two, two fantastic guitar players that I I've had you know done work stuff with. Uh, Orianthi and I have have done a couple things together. We've played uh, gigs together. We've been in music videos together, um, but we've never recorded anything. Uh, I I would love to lay some drums down to one of her song ideas or something like that same thing with john five too where we we played a show um together where we we didn't actually play together but uh i was opening for him at an sure. event kind of thing and then we but we got to hang and and we hung out after the show in the dressing rooms and stuff like that next we did exchange information and everything um but he's such a phenomenal guitar player, and I love the stuff that he, the solo stuff he does outside of Rob Zombie. I mean, I, I love Rob Zombie too, but um, that's on the other list. Uh, <laughs> but 
but I like John Solo stuff, and he's another guy that uh, it'd be cool to be like, hey man, you know, let's do it. Send send me a couple of guitar hooks and stuff, and I'll lay some drums down to it while we're all stuck indoors, <laughs> kind of thing. So those are like two guitar players off the top of my head that like, you know, I I've had some sort of uh, uh, passing with or um or someone who's an acquaintance kind of thing sure. where it'd be cool to like build on that a little bit more um in terms of like you know people that i don't really have a big connection to but would love to actually work with is like someone like rob zombie um trent Reznor. oh nine inch nails yeah you know there there have been pseudo paths that have crossed within those worlds where it's like oh you know playing a show with so-and-so who tours with him or uh i know this guy who's in that band or you know like so there's connection it's it's you know two degrees of separation (laughs) yeah not quite three or four like it's the we're closer than we think you know what i mean (laughs) um but without actually knowing that person, like I've met Rob a handful of times kind of thing. But if he were to walk up to me on the street right now, he wouldn't know who I was, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, and in years and years and years ago, um, uh, I have a Nine Inch Nails story, but uh, never actually got to meet uh, with Trent when that happened. Um, uh we'll just say names were circulated that's all um (laughs) but those are guys that i'd love to work with those would be cool um really cool uh artists yeah i love what they do and stuff like that it'd be that'd be kind of awesome to play with them there we go well we'll make sure to tweet at them and let them know that (laughs) that that nick wants to work with you so uh we'll uh, make sure to make that happen but the next question nick keeping it more current who have you been jamming recently? You know, obviously you're a very busy guy, so I don't know how much free time you have to listen to extraneous music, but, you know, who have you been jamming recently? Um, I, nobody. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I, I'm such a terrible musician. I don't listen to music. Uh, Interesting. Like for, so for, not like for, for fun. Like, yeah, for fun. Like I don't, when I, when I come home, or I wake up in the morning. I don't dead silence put music. On. No, 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 no. Dead, no. I listen to podcasts. Oh, okay. Um, so, so well, okay. So, how about this? I'll rephrase yeah. the question. What podcasts are you listening to? Because you know, I feel like that's you know within within an nth degree of music. So you know, okay. Uh, no, it it is. Um, I mean, I'll answer it both ways. How, how's <laughs> we'll start with the music part first. So, um, I I don't. Uh, unfortunately, I don't always have time to just put music on the jam to sure. on my own. Um, I I need a significant gap in my schedule, uh, and uh, in order to do that, in order to throw some songs on that I like, um, and just sit down behind the drums and have fun and just relax and just jam for fun. Fair um, that that requires me to have. Uh, some time to do that and uh, I don't always have that afforded to me when I do I take it full advantage of it sure. um, but uh, the reality is I'm frequently under deadlines where uh, I have a show coming up with artist A and I have a recording I have to do for artist B and I have to shoot a video for artist C and um, you know and they they tend to stack like that, so I have to prioritize my time uh, behind the drums to meet deadlines. Sure. Yeah. So um, uh, that's kind of where it is. Like I I, I have a, a to do list kind of thing of like that I have to check off, learn this song, practice that song, um, record this song, whatever it is. And, and they're prioritized by deadline. If I'm playing tomorrow night, artist A, then today I have to spend the majority of my time behind the kit working on the set list for tomorrow's show. Um, or if someone sends me a song and they, they 
need me to record drums for it. I don't want to keep them waiting too long. Sure, yeah. Um, so I try to shuffle that into the deck as quickly as I can as well so they're not waiting two, three weeks to get their drum tracks back. Um, but again, that has to go with priorities. It's like, well, if I have a gig coming up, which nobody has gigs coming up right now, yeah. <laughs> but if I had a gig coming up, uh, that still has to take the priority, you know? Um, right now, it's been it's been a lot of recording. Um, while everyone's staying at home, I'm doing a massive amount of session work, which is fantastic. It's great, and I got my I have my own studio up and running for for recording drums and everything. Um, and so now it's almost like a just first come first serve, where sure. I I you know I'm I'm doing them in the order that they were sent to me, and once I get one checked off the list, I can now move on to the next one. But again, that's not affording me any time to kind of just sit and like have fun and jam. <laughs> uh, so I don't really ever get to do that. Um, and like I said, when I'm at home, I spend 10 hours a day at my studio. You know, I'm there typically at, at nine in the morning, um, earlier sometimes, sometimes eight in the morning. And then I'm there all day, um, practicing, uh, learning material, recording songs, and teaching lessons. Um, and then I typically leave at, you know, seven, eight o'clock at night. So I've been there all day. I've been behind the drums with music blowing into my ears all day long. <laughs> so when I get home or when I wake up first thing in the morning, that's when I throw a podcast on and I'll have that on while I'm cooking dinner or, um, uh, you know, exercising in the morning or something like that or having breakfast. And then, you know, at night when I'm going to bed, that that's when I'll pop the TV on and put a movie on and, and fall asleep 10 minutes into it or something. <laughs> but so to answer your podcast question, who am I listening to? Uh, I'm a really, really big fan of Kevin Smith. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. And he cranks content out like nobody's business, even yeah. before the coronavirus and, and, um, the pandemic and the stay at home, he was regularly pumping content out on uh, his podcast networks and YouTube and stuff like that. And like anything that dude puts out, I instantly am a sucker for. <laughs> um, so I was listening to one of his, his live shows this morning, you know? Um, uh, so I'm a really big fan of his, uh, and a, most of the other stuff is honestly like super, super geeky comic book pop culture stuff. So, uh, I, I subscribe to a bunch of YouTube channels that do daily shows and stuff like that, specifically centered around pop culture, what's going on in entertainment, in, in the entertainment news, um, uh, there's a podcast out of Australia that's a fairly popular one called The Weekly Planet. And um, uh, I've been listening to them for a couple of years, too. Uh, those two guys are hysterical. Ironically enough, the one dude's name is also Nick Mason. <laughs> I It's happened a couple times just in the last year where, like, I've met somebody – and we started talking like this and we started talking podcasts and they're like, dude, I listened to this one and the dude, the same guy has your name. Kind of <laughs> and I, and I was like, I know the one you're talking about. I listen to them too. And, um, and another friend of mine, uh, from back East, actually, he hit me up on Facebook uh, a couple of months ago and he's like, dude, they were talking about you on that podcast. And I was like, what are you talking? <laughs> what? He's like, there's a podcast in Australia and the guy has, he, one of the hosts has the same name as you and they brought you up. I was like, I listen to that podcast too. I heard them talk about me. Um, and I was like, are you sure they're not talking about the other Nick Mason? And he's like, I'm pretty sure they were talking about you. <laughs> I was like, I must have missed that episode then. Um, but uh, that's another one that, like, I love the content that those guys put out, those two guys. And um, so anything they put out, I listen to. And then there's a couple other ones. Um, uh on Spotify and stuff like that, that I'll, I'll get to once in a while. I'll listen to Joe Rogan stuff. Yeah. If he has a particular guest on that I'm interested in, um, then I'll listen to his. Um, but usually his or his is almost like buying a magazine where it's like, 
if you like who's on the cover of the magazine, then you're going to want to buy it and read that article. So I kind of treat Joe's podcast like that, where it's like, if he's got a guest on that I'm interested in or want to hear from, I'm going to listen to his and it's sure. never, ever been disappointing. Um, and then occasionally I'll listen to a couple others. There's some horror ones and stuff like that and that I'm, I'm into, I'm, you know, super into horror movies and stuff like that. So I, I like those ones too. Um, and those are usually pretty good, but a lot of the time too, it's also guest oriented. It's like, well, who are they going to have on? Oh, that person, I'm not sure who that is. Uh, maybe I'll save that one for later. And then, or if they have somebody on that I really do like, then you're like or Ooh. they're talking about a new movie that's coming out that I, I just saw or whatever. Then I'm like, I gotta, I gotta check this one out, you know? So there we go. Yeah, that, that's where, that's where I'm at with them. I kind <laughs> of, I kind of figured that's what your answer would be. So I was just like, let me see. I'm like, I'm almost positive. He has to like, listen to something or, you know, he could just listen to deafening silence, which is also totally appropriate considering, you know, how much music you churn through. I'm just like, there has, I'm like, there has to be just like, you know, you, you you have to have that like time to be like, okay, yeah, I need to be away from it. Like, you know, it's my job. It's what I do. You know, I have people that I teach lessons to, you know, it's not just one kind of genre you're listening to. It's like a bunch of different things, which is always really good. And I imagine it's probably good for you to just listen to have, have people that you teach that listen to different stuff, you know, people that you sign up to do stuff for, they play and make different types of music. So you know, I I was like, let me see. I was like, if he says podcast, I was like, let me see what type of podcast he's listening to. Because I'm like, I can almost be guaranteed that even if he doesn't listen to music, I'm like, he has to be listening to podcasts because that's a little bit easier, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wouldn't, I couldn't do the deafening silence thing. I like to have something going on, some <laughs> voice, even if in the background, like there, um, uh, there are times when I'll, I'll throw a podcast on and I won't even listen to it at all. I just have it on. Just to make um, noise. Yeah. Just noise. Like, and that I was doing that today where like I have a little um, built in uh, speaker in my bathroom so I sure. can put, you know, put a podcast on or something like that when I'm in the shower or something. And I'll, I'll put something on, I'll jump in the shower and then I'll come out and I'll make breakfast and get dressed and do whatever it is. And I'm like totally ignoring the fact that it's still playing <laughs> out loud where you can hear it in every room in the house, but it's still there. It's still playing. I might not know. I might not be paying that close attention to it, but it's still on. I, I don't think I could just sit in silence. You know? <laughs> I hope not. That, that'd just be very strange. And I'd be very worried for you, Nick, even though we just yeah. met, I'd be like, man, Nick, I'm like, I'd be very worried for you, bud. That's uh that's, yeah, you're it's in a house good. all by yourself, all alone. It's dark, and you're just yeah. in silence all the time. <laughs> I, just, I think that's a red flag for almost anybody. I, yeah, I would be like, I don't know, man. I don't know if I'd want to hang out with you in real life. <laughs> if that was the case, I'd be like, you know, I might have something else to do. But um, but that's cool. I love. I'm also a big like nerd and stuff like that. So I do love like comic stuff. So I figured I asked the next question to kind of play into that. What's one person that you love like comic book wise like any character you know across like marvel or dc or any other sort of medium and then what's one that you like that is best portrayed in like movies uh so let me make sure i'm understanding this right what what's like one of my favorite like comic, comic book char characters okay and then what's one that you feel like is best portrayed like cinematically uh, um, all right. So, well, I, it's kind of almost the same answer for both. So uh, <laughs> Spider-Man, Spider-Man is my favorite superhero. He's always been my favorite ever since I was a little kid. Um, and in fact, if you could see the wall behind you, right and behind my laptop, um, I have uh, a metal, uh, sign kind of thing, the, on the wall of Spider-Man on the wall right behind oh, you. Oh, that's sick. Um, yeah. So... Spidey's been my, he's been my number one my whole life. I had a stack of Spider-Man comics when I was a kid. He was like my first real hero, you know? Uh, so I think he kind of translates well into any medium. Like, I grew up watching reruns of the old Spider-Man cartoon. 
yeah. from the sixties. I grew up watching reruns of that, and then there was uh, another Spider-Man cartoon in the eighties that I used to watch. And then there was the one in the 90s that I used to watch. <laughs> and thanks to Disney, I have all of them now in one place on their app. So I can go back and relive that. So I think that, I think the, um, and then, like I said, I had a stack of Spider Man comics when I was a kid, too. So um, uh, I think, I think he works in any medium. He works on the page um, in, in an animated form. I mean, the Spider Verse movie was phenomenal. Yeah. And I've yeah. watched it probably three or four times now <laughs> because it's so darn good. And um, and then the live action movies too. I I love the live action Spider Man movies, the the original ones, the Sam Raimi ones. The those three. I was already a big Sam Raimi fan anyway because I love the Evil Dead and I yeah, love sure. all the stuff he does. So when it they said he was going to do Spider Man, first I kind of scratched my head. I'm like. The guy who did Evil Dead. <laughs> but he... Uh, that was one of the most... Hands down best adaptations of bringing a comic book to life. Because okay, yeah. his, movies, his movies felt like comic books. But they were real physical people. Bright colors, everything. Um, so I think those movies still work... Uh, fantastically so cinematically i mean there there's a bunch of heroes that work uh on the big screen but like spider-man i think he's always kind of worked on the big screen um batman's been hit or miss batman yeah. has had some really really amazing movies and then he's had a couple of not so amazing movies <laughs> And then there's been some middle of the road ones even yeah. where you're like, it's not terrible. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not Batman and Robin, but it's not it's not Tim Burton either. And Tim Burton's Batman movies were those those are my favorites. <laughs> um uh but even like when you go super campy, you go to like the Adam West sixties T V show, like I love it. I love the Adam West TV show. So <laughs> I think there's been a lot of uh, heroes that can work in a in a cinematic thing. Um, some of the times they just need to find their right footing. You know, like the Superman movies, the Christopher Reeves movies. Um, those first two are so phenomenal. Like yeah. that first one especially is such a perfect movie in my opinion. <laughs> and. I was so excited for like Man of Steel when it came out and then so disappointed. Like <laughs> 10 minutes into that, 10 minutes into the the movie, uh... sitting in the movie theater, I was like, uh-oh, I don't think I like this. <laughs> and But anyway, you were saying as Shazam, fantastic movie. I would also I would also agree it's probably my favorite DC film currently. Of of the new of the newest that ones, been yeah. Putting out, I'll I'll agree to that. Like Shazam was great. Um, sorry, I plug it in my laptop because the battery's getting low. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll agree with you on Shazam. I thought it was awesome. I loved it. Um, uh, I'm not saying they're all bad. I'm just saying <laughs> some, of them, some of them missed the mark. But I sure. think a lot of the I think most of the characters, especially now that. Marvel's kind of paved the way and shown people how it can work. Sure, I yeah. think I think almost any comic book character can work on screen if it's just done the right way. The problem is it's not always done the right way. And that is um, at the fault of the the people behind it. You yeah. know, so you know, we you just gotta make sure that the the people in charge um, trust the directors and writers that they're hiring and stuff like that. So uh, I think anything has the potential to be good um, just as much as it has the potential to, to be a be bad horrendous <laughs> dumpster <laughs> fire. Oh man. Yes. I will totally agree with that. Um, you know, I'm glad you mentioned all those. Cause I feel like for me, like I always like asking kind of like general nerdy 
geeky sort of questions because that's what I enjoy in my free time. So I feel like most like musicians enjoy that sort of stuff, which is kind of like ironic, but you know it happens to work out. So I'm glad you. I'm glad you had some really good answers from me, Nick. And uh, oh, that's cool. Uh, what would be, I guess, to kind of end off that like, nerdy, geeky sort of tangent, what would be one that you would want to see hit the, the big screen? What would be one that's not currently out that you would like to see? Oh, man. Okay. That's tough because everything's out now. All, you know what I mean? Anything's they've possible. Been, <laughs> they've, been, they've been hammering um, uh, comic book movies left and right the last bunch of years. Um, it's almost like what isn't a comic book movie in theaters right now? <laughs> um, that that's a that that's a deep think question. Um, <laughs> there, you know, there's some characters that maybe um, were like side characters in a story arc or something like that, or even villains or something like that that I would love to see finally brought in uh i think there i mean there there have been rumors about it forever but i'd love to see in um craven the hunter oh uh, yeah uh, be brought onto the screen um uh hobgoblin is another spider-man villain that yeah he doesn't get like his just due because he's kind of just a Green Goblin knockoff, and you know what I mean. <laughs> he even got the technology from Green Goblin, but like, I think it'd be cool to have a good proper Hobgoblin uh, on screen at some point. Uh, and then there's some characters too that like we have seen on screen. I just think they need to be like they better do over. <laughs> yeah, we we need like a really really good compelling. Mr. Freeze story. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. like we got we got Joker. We got the Joaquin Phoenix Joker, um, and that movie was so well done. Um, I think you can go the same route with Mr. Freeze and have a really, really good, compelling story surrounding him. Uh, so he's another one that I think needs a do over. Not like nothing against Arnold. Um, cause I, I, like, I got a lot of love for Arnold Schwarzenegger and I've been <laughs> an Arnold, I've been on an Arnold kick lately too, where like I watch all of his like fitness and health uh, <laughs> advice videos and stuff like that. And like, um, and I do think that he is like the only person in that movie that knew what movie he was making <laughs> True. and uh, okay, i'll give you that yeah and and he gave us some of the most god awful wonderful uh <laughs> i know what you're talking about and and one-liners and everything you know what i mean like it's so good so um so i'm not taking anything away from his portrayal of mr freeze but i think we can do a really good um heartfelt compelling story of like again how someone sort of goes uh starts out one way and ends up going through the reverse of the hero's journey and and ends up being the villain at the end kind of thing in a similar way that they did with joker um Ooh. i think they could go mr freeze that way that would be really kind of badass there we go well uh, DC, if you want to pay Nick some royalties on this great idea, uh, feel free to, you know, get reach out to him. I'm sure, I'm sure he'd gladly take the royalty check uh, that you guys will be providing to him for, <laughs> for that excellent movie plot. So he'll give a nice thumbs up and be like, you know, that's a good idea. Thanks for that. <laughs> We're going to go make our $2 billion movie now. <laughs> yeah. It's like we saw it on this like random interview, you know, it was supposed to be right. about music and now it's about comics, but maybe, yeah. it, maybe a spinoff channel will be coming soon or something. But um, oh. the next question, Nick, getting back to the music stuff, which is what we're mostly here for. Um, what would be your dream tour lineup? Who would be on it? Um, That, uh, that's a, that would be cool. I've seen some pretty cool shows in my day where 
I've gotten to see some some pretty awesome bands and stuff like that all together at once. But um, if I could pair a couple of bands together, I think if you put and that maybe these bands have even already done festivals together, something like that, and I'm and I'm just not aware of it. But if you put like Metallica is your headliner Ooh, with okay. Rammstein just before them. And then maybe like a, a Rob Zombie or a Marilyn Manson before that, which I know like most of those kind of mesh together. I'm trying to think like uh, what would be cool to put, what bands would be cool to put together that would, that would sound well. And Metallica, I, I feel like you could... You could put Metallica and Rammstein together. I don't necessarily think you could put like Rob Zombie or Marilyn Manson with Metallica, but having that Rammstein kind of uh, palate cleanser in the middle, because they they Rammstein could fit with either one. You yeah, know what I mean? A hundred percent. Um and so I think that would be kind of a cool show lineup to see. Um be, the just from a theatrical standpoint, if you were yeah. to put like Rob Rammstein together, you know. The the only way you could even top that from a theatrical standpoint is like if you stuck Slipknot on the bill or something like that. <laughs> I don't think I'd be able to handle a concert that intense. <laughs> where it's like those three bands, there'd be so much stuff flying at you oh, the whole time. Lights and fire and like you know what I mean? You'd walk out of there, you'd have no eyebrows from all the pyro. Yeah. <laughs> um I don't know if a if a concert that intense it's too could powerful. exist. <laughs> Yeah, it might be too much too much metal for one hand, you know. It's okay um, though. Well, I feel like we might need it after, you know, after the whole quarantine stuff. I feel like we need we need something strong like that. So, I I you know, I don't I know if you're going to add to that answer, but I feel like that would be I uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know if I could stick anymore. I'm just trying to pull names off the top of my head of like what would be a really awesome cool concert lineup. But there's other I mean, it doesn't have to be heavy stuff either <laughs> like there's plenty of other bands i could stick together where i'd be like wouldn't it be cool to see this person play with that person or you know what i mean um uh i i could probably put lineups together all night if I. <laughs> <laughs> well i feel like the lineup you came up with was was super tight so i'm, I'm about it um but the next question nick um, if you were trapped on a desert island for the next month and there was one record you could bring with you, what would it be? I know that's kind of like a very weighty hate question because you hate this question. Do you really hate this question? Oh my god, I, that's the most hated well, question. No, it's it's. Um, I'm gonna I'm go gonna leave my interviewing I'm, careers over with. See you later, no, guys. no, 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 no. I'm I'm messing with you. No, um, it's a month. I feel I, like you I've could been, do it. No, I've been asked this question before. Where it's like, <laughs> oh, if you were if you're on a desert island, you could only have one record. What would it be, kind of thing? Um, I the thing is, I feel like my answer is too cliche because we've talked a lot about it already in the interview. It'd be <laughs> perfect. I wish I had a better answer. I wish I could say like, "Well, the Beatles' White Album." You know what I mean? But I'm just not that much of a music snob. So, so fair enough it, fair enough it would have to be like metallica's black album i could probably listen to yeah, that that's record. classic though you know which uh, in all honestly like if a song comes on the radio i'll listen to it but i probably haven't listened to that record in its entirety in in 15 years <laughs> but i don't need to because i listened to it so many times when i was a kid you know what I mean? Just you don't being have like to. 14 just, uh... years old and just putting your CD player on repeat for three hours. Um, so, yeah, it's all up here already. So yeah. I could probably live with that album uh, on a desert island and not go insane. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I already kind of know all of it. Um, Fair enough. I think there's other things where it's like, I think most other records in the world, you'd get like three or four songs in after the 9,000th time you've heard it and be like, I have to skip this next one. I can't do it. You know what I mean? 
There we go. Well, I'm sorry I asked you the most hated question, but you know, I feel Not like the most hated. <laughs> like I said, I felt my answer was shallow. Um, <laughs> it's more of a, it's not a reflection on you or, or that question it's more of a reflection on me <laughs> it's okay well we'll we'll skip it past it and we'll ask you some question that i feel like you'll enjoy answering which is what is your favorite tv show and favorite movie um all right i got a really bizarre i got really bizarre answers for both okay there we go hit me hit me with the um, bizarre answers i absolutely like if someone says well what are your top five favorite records or I, i'd be like i don't know but uh <laughs> I, actually, I actually do have like a favorite tv show and a favorite movie and there we go both, wow go from left field so my favorite tv show like of all time it was frazier and interesting uh, i would have never is, picked you as a frazier I, guy i challenge i challenge you there is but it's great though bad episode of that show ever made not one episode of that show i've ever been like this one's boring i'm gonna skip it no <laughs> every single episode of that show that was ever produced was great there we go and i watched it i used to watch it when it was on tv and then i used to watch it when it was in syndication and stuff like that and i i mean i remember trying to my first job my first you know real job when i was in high school i remember trying to time my uh lunch breaks to when you know Frasier was on TV because we had a, like a little uh, TV in the break room and I could go back there and have a sandwich and watch an episode of Frasier on my lunch break. <laughs> so I used, to, I, I used to try and time my lunch breaks to when I knew Frasier was on. Um, and then I would, of course, watch it at home and stuff like that. And I think I've probably watched that entire series start to end, which it was on TV for like 11 years. Yeah. <laughs> It's a long haul. I think I've watched the entire series start to end maybe twice. Um, and uh, like when I first moved to LA, um, I didn't have a TV. I had just like my computer, and I so and Netflix and stuff like that didn't exist yet. <laughs> so, um, uh, I you know you'd find these like backdoor websites where you could stream uh you know uh tv shows and stuff like that and there was one that there was a streaming channel on like this super you know gonna infest your computer full of virus <laughs> website that was just fraser it was 24 hours it was, just the, it was just a fraser streaming network and like if i had that's almost the only thing i could watch and it didn't bother me it didn't bother me at all. I would just be like, you know, bored. Huh, might as well put the Frasier stream on. And it was literally the entire show series in a loop. That's it. <laughs> it just in a loop. So, you know, you got 11 years or however many years that show was on TV. You got that many years worth of TV just looping. Just looping, yeah. So you could throw it on any time of the day or night and it would be on just whatever random episode kind of thing that you happen to get to however many hours had passed since you watched it the last time <laughs> and it was good and enjoyable every single time you turned it on um that's that's hands down my favorite tv show ever um my favorite movie is the 10 commandments with yule brenner and charlton heston and the it it happened so uh i have a really deep uh love of egyptian artwork and and egyptian culture i have again you can't see it in my house right now um but <laughs> i have a lot of egyptian art decorating the house uh i there is some piece of egyptian art in every single room in this house um, somewhere. It might be subtle. It might be small. There is something Egyptian in every room in this house. The living room more than others. Sure. Um, but uh, I grew up loving that. And I think part of that comes from watching the Ten Commandments when I was a kid. Because the movie takes place in ancient Egypt. Yes. And I loved the architecture. I loved the colors. I loved... The wardrobe in that movie, the, the sets, the set design, the wardrobe, uh, so much of that movie 
is so beautiful. And um, Charlton Heston and Yul Brenner, it's like you got the two biggest heavyweight actors ever. They're both so badass. <laughs> and um, and I the every year um, at around the same time of year, it would be on TV in two parts because it's such a long movie. It's like yeah. three or four hours it long. Is. Yeah. Um, so they would air like uh, two nights in a row. They would air the first part, and then the next night they would air the second part. And they always did it in the spring. And I didn't realize this until I got older that they air it around um, the the Jewish holiday of Passover. Correct. Yes. Because it's the Ten Commandments, and that's literally <laughs> like a major plot point in the movie. <laughs> Is the first Passover and and the the plague coming and killing the firstborn pe children. You know what I mean? Like, I I didn't make that connection as a kid, um, but then when I got a little older, I was like, oh, every year the Ten Commandments is on TV, <laughs> and it's always on TV around Passover. I didn't know that, and it um and that's how I knew we were approaching Easter and stuff like that. Just like last week, um, because. The week before, the Ten Commandments the was, on was on TV. Yeah, <laughs> it was on TV two weeks ago, and that's how I was like, "Oh, it must be near Passover <laughs> Easter. <laughs> Easter must be coming." But you know what I mean? Um, that's how I was able to gauge my calendar because I was like, "Oh, the Ten Commandments is on TV. <laughs> they, they do it every year." Yeah, and um, I used to watch it every single year. It was like I looked forward to it. Eventually, I just bought the movie. Um, but that and, and it's and the I mean the crazy part is too it's it's a story. It's a Bible story, and it's also um, uh, uh, from it's from from both the the Jewish religion and the Christian and and, and Catholic religion. Mm -hmm. Like it is a religious story, and I'm not. Uh, I'm not Jewish and I'm not Christian. I'm not Catholic. Like, um, I, that's that the fact that it's a story from their, um, teachings and their, and, and their doctrine and stuff like that never really made a difference. It's literally the movies, the 10 commandments, like it's <laughs> what it's about. And that never really, um, that wasn't the influence onto why I like that movie. I like that movie because of, uh, it was it to me. It represents the golden age of Hollywood. You know, it was made during that golden age, and like I said, the sets and the 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 acting and the um, uh, the costumes and all that stuff that just lit me up as a kid. And I was like, oh my god, this movie is so great, and and I have loved it ever since. And it's become my favorite movie. <laughs> that is the most strangest answer i've gotten i think ever it, totally totally out of left field you know i never... feel like it would make more sense if i was coming at it from like a religious standpoint yeah or i love this movie because it speaks to me because of my religion but okay. no i'm i'm not a part of those religions <laughs> um so I think that was the best part you were just like yeah i'm not a part of either of those religions yet this is still right. my favorite movie but it's still a great movie yeah it is movie you know what i mean so um it yeah it, the, i that that's my answer for it oh my huh. god that that was that was the, the strangest take i've ever gotten on this question so um, i told you it would be again number one nick is number one on this one so if you feel like you can <laughs> outpace nick on this which is gonna be hard milestone to beat i have to say um also because like i feel like there's a little representation for like me too because like my my parents are like religious so i grew up religious so i've watched that movie countless amounts of times and still classic but to me from a different perspective though, a different you were perspective. watching that movie because they were like here learn something yes exactly I you were just like yeah Bowen egyptians Lada. baby you, yeah <laughs> yeah exactly it was almost like ben hur which another great yeah character. another one yeah <laughs> you watched that movie when you were a kid not because of whatever the overarching story was it's because that chariot race was badass yeah. man <laughs> so well, it's quite the perspective change, but I, I still appreciate the answer. And then, of course, lastly, Nick, the most important thing, tell them about you, 
where they can find you out on social media. You know, if you have any, you know, if you, people want to learn how to drum too, Nick teaches drumming too. So I figure I mentioned that as well. Uh, so the floor is yours, Nick. Tell the people what's up. Cool. Um, well, you like you said, I teach uh, also, and, and that's open to anybody because uh, right now I'm doing all of my lessons online. I, I can't do in-person lessons <laughs> at the moment, kind of against the rules. Yes. Um, so hopefully just not for much longer and probably I'll be able to be in a room physically with people again soon. But um, uh, so you, you can find me uh, online if you look up Living Dead Drummer, literally – anywhere uh that's me uh so you type that into google 100 percent of the search results that come back to <laughs> living dead drummer this guy right here um so i have a website livingdeaddrummer.com i keep that fairly updated I, I try to keep it as as accurate and as updated as possible uh social media every social media thing out there uh if you just look up look me up at living dead drummer I've even like downloaded apps and stuff like that. Just registered the name, created an account, and then deleted the app. Uh, just, <laughs> just to make sure that like I got the name. There so, you go. So, um, but the big ones, obviously, like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, those are the big ones that I use most frequently, um, and uh, those are the ones that I keep updated uh, pretty much on a daily basis. And they're all at Living Dead Drummer uh, YouTube. Of course, type that in. You're going to find me. Uh, and and so um, you can reach out to me that way if you are looking for session work, if, you need, if you're looking for drum tracks or something like that cut. I have a full multi-tracking studio at my disposal um, that I sit in for multiple hours every day. So uh, I can do uh, high-quality multi-tracking sessions there. And then I also, like you said, do lessons. Um, and I do remote lessons from that studio as well. And I got a great setup that has, you know, direct feeds of the, the drum audio signal uh, that's nicely processed and everything. So no matter what device you're taking the lesson on, whether it's a phone, a laptop, an iPad, whatever, you're going to get high quality audio coming to you, uh, you know, set up with like webcams and everything else. I'm talking into a headset mic the whole time. <laughs> I, you know, I got a bunch of mixing stuff going on, so that way it's dialed in really, really nice. I can make sure the students have a great view and they can see everything nice and clearly and better hear everything nice and clearly. And um, uh, so I, I am available for online remote lessons. I have a few slots available um, during the week. Uh, not many, though. Uh, I'm, thankfully, I have a fairly healthy teaching practice. Um, and I can't accept too many more students uh, just because there's not enough hours in the day. But but there's uh, I can usually find a place to squeeze somebody in somewhere. So there, there's a few spots open if anybody's interested. There we go. Well, I want to give a shout out to Doug. Uh, he was the one who had set this up. So I want to give him some some shouts, some love. Um, but go check out Nick. Uh, fantastic drummer i had checked out some of your videos because i feel like i gotta do my research you know a little bit um and i was just like man this guy is awesome and you know i appreciate nick for coming on and check the links below where you can find out all about nick um all of his social media things of that nature his youtube channel will all be below so make sure to go subscribe to him as well and if you enjoy this interview while it be long it was a great interview uh so go check it out um and make sure to go tweet out rob zombie uh david grohl lars oldred i'm just, <laughs> I'm just gonna say names all of these people you need to tweet at and uh let nick know you know let the people know that nick really wants to work with them so let's make it happen let's make those dreams reality and thanks of course to nick for coming on tonight and chat Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, big shout out to, to Groovy for connecting us and stuff like that, too. Um, he's the man. And uh, really appreciated chatting with you. It's been a pleasure. You had some good questions in there, some good hardball ones, too, which I like, which I appreciated. Um, and, uh, yeah, thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>